Voyager 1 has sent mysterious signals to Earth that NASA describes as anomalous. No other man-made object has ever traveled as far into space as the spacecraft in its identical sister probe. But what happened to Voyager 1 in the depths of space? Have we finally got an answer to the Voyager golden records? Or has Voyager 1 fallen into the grip of an alien civilization? 161 astronomical units, or around 24.2 billion kilometers. This is the incredible distance that now gapes between Voyager 1 and the Sun. At the time of their launch, however, it was not at all clear that the two Voyager probes would one day become the longest-lived representatives of their kind. Although the space probes are currently making close contact with interstellar space, this was not their original goal. When Voyager 1 left Earth on September 5, 1977, it was actually only supposed to study the outer planets of the solar system, which were still largely unexplored at the time. And that is something we need to remind ourselves of. Voyager 1 began its mission at a time when modern computers and smartphones were still foreign words, and yet it continues its journey to this day. As the mission of the two Voyager probes has now lasted over 45 years, it is rightly considered one of the most significant successes of NASA and space travel in general. Given the distance described at the beginning, it seems almost unbelievable that communication with Earth still works at all. Okay, admittedly, the exchange between the earthly stations and the space probe is not exactly rapid. It takes around 20 hours for a signal to bridge the gigantic distance. This also means that it takes almost two days before a message is received and a reply is sent back, a period of time that we otherwise only know when we write with our crush. But joking aside, despite the incredible distances, the Voyager probes have already provided us with a lot of groundbreaking information. Because at this point, we should not forget one thing. The two are the first, and so far, only man-made machines to have visited interstellar space. That is, space far away from the stars. While Voyager 1 had already reached the great unknown in 2012, its sister probe followed six years later. But in all the jubilation that accompanied these galactic milestones, the experts could not help but draw attention to a surprising fact. Interstellar space is much stranger than we thought. In order to better understand the exciting findings, we should briefly acquire some basic knowledge. The Sun is not an immobile celestial body that shines quietly away. On the contrary, it is a nuclear furnace that races through space at a speed of 725,000 kilometers per hour. Dynamic magnetic field lines extend around the host star. Plasma currents, known as solar winds, are constantly escaping along these invisible lines. These penetrate our entire home system and eventually reach the interstellar medium. In other words, the particles, magnetic fields and radiation that were catapulted away during and after the Big Bang and still exist today in the space between the stars. However, as in the case of water and oil, the mixing of solar winds and the interstellar medium is not uniform. In fact, the solar winds form a bubble within the medium, the so-called heliosphere. The data collected by the Voyager probes show that the heliosphere extends approximately 18 billion kilometers around the Sun. At the same time, the heliosphere also acts as an important protective shield. It shields everything inside it from a large proportion of cosmic radiation. The outermost part of this shield, called the heliopause, is sometimes referred to as the boundary of the solar system. And for good reason. This is where interstellar space begins. And when Voyager 1 plunged into this very area, it raised a lot of questions in the minds of experts. For example, the interstellar magnetic field was in reality two to three times stronger than previously expected. Conversely, this means that the pressure exerted by the interstellar particles on the heliopause is also up to 10 times more intense than predicted. However, the data collected by Voyager 1 had a big catch. It was incomplete. In fact, 
the component responsible for measuring the plasma temperature has been broken since the 1980s. Fortunately, however, the corresponding instrument on Voyager 2 is still intact, so their excursion into the boundary region turned out to be even more revealing. Now we know what happens when an object approaches the heliopause. The surrounding plasma slows down, becoming denser and heats up. However, the plasma is so thin and irregular in its composition that the temperatures around Voyager turned out to be astonishingly low. However, this did not apply to the interstellar medium itself. At just under 30,000 degrees Celsius, this is much hotter than expected. That's pretty, pretty strange. Furthermore, the data transmitted by Voyager 2 confirmed that the plasma from both sides of the heliopause spills over into the other area. The researchers described the corresponding composition as a stream of low-energy particles that extends 160 million kilometers into the heliopause. Another fact that puzzled the scientists was what the probes experienced as they approached the heliopause. At a distance of around 1.3 billion kilometers, Voyager 1 entered a relatively static area where the solar wind had slowed down drastically. Before crossing the heliopause, however, Voyager 2 flew through an area that differed markedly from its comparatively static counterpart. Heliophysicist Patrick Kane, who works as a program scientist at NASA headquarters, summed up the researchers' confusion. This is really quite, quite strange. It proves to us that we really need more data. A statement that is not only aimed at the different insights of the two probes, but also at the fact that our overall picture of the heliosphere has enormous gaps. In fact, we don't even know what shape the structure is. It may be a sphere, but it is also conceivable that it resembles a croissant or has kind of a comet tail. Why is Voyager 1 sending such strange data? But then, after all those years of discoveries and milestones, Voyager 1 suddenly started sending a vague jumble of data that just didn't make sense. It didn't take long after this report was published for the online community's imagination to run wild. Had Voyager possibly been hijacked by an alien species? Have the aliens reprogrammed the probe to send it back to Earth with a galactic declaration of war? Fortunately, the situation was not quite that dramatic, but the signals were still absolutely baffling. It seemed that the strangely chaotic telemetry data was generated completely at random. The information from the Attitude Articulation and Control System suggested a system failure, but apart from that, the probe was working perfectly. The corresponding Attitude Control System is responsible along with other things for aligning Voyager's main antenna precisely with the Earth. This is the only way to ensure communication over a gigantic distance. In view of the nonsensical AACS data, it was all the more surprising that the data transmission of the scientific instruments proceeded as usual. Moreover, Voyager continued to respond to terrestrial commands. Since the signal strength of the radio link was also unchanged, the main antenna must still be pointing towards Earth. But what was the problem? Well, fortunately, a few weeks later, the experts managed to track down the air devil and crack the riddle of the mysterious data records. First, NASA engineers discovered that the attitude control system was actually working correctly. Well, with one caveat. It was trying to falsely send the telemetry data to Earth via an onboard computer that had not been working for years. As a result, the information arrived at the Earth stations as chopped up data garbage, causing nothing but confusion. Once the cause had been discovered, NASA used the radio antennas of the Deep Space Network to send the command for the AACS to transmit the data to the correct, intact onboard computer in the future. With success, the experts were once again able to enjoy consistent telemetry data. And yet, one mystery remained unsolved. What caused the attitude control system to fall back on the wrong computer in the first place? NASA employees could only speculate on this. The cause may have been a faulty command from another component of the onboard electronics. 
This in turn could mean that another component is defective and that the engineering team will have even more work to do in the future. Voyager 2 is lost in space after a wrong command. In fact, the next setback was to follow in July 2023. This time, Voyager 2 was affected. NASA had made a serious mishap. An error in the commands caused the probe to misalign its antenna by two degrees. From then on, it pointed past Earth. So while Voyager 2 and the Earthly researchers were communicating at cross-purposes, the experts worked flat out to re-establish their connection. Around two weeks after the gigantic loss of contact, the redemptive news arrived. A space communication station in Canberra, Australia had sent Voyager 2 a signal to point its antenna back towards Earth. Around 37 hours later, the researchers received confirmation that the operation had worked. But what actually happens as soon as a Voyager component gives up the ghost? Well, conveniently, the space probes have a backup system for this scenario, which steps in if worse comes to worst. And in fact, Voyager 1 had already relied on this backup in 2017 when some unused flight control thrusters were switched on to compensate for the loss of attitude control thrusters. So does this mean that probes will continue to provide us with exciting information from the far corners of space for the next 45 years? Well, not quite. The last contact with humanity's most distant outposts will probably take place in 2030. Due to the ever-increasing distance, communication will no longer be possible. Conversely, this does not mean that Voyager 1's journey is over. Unless something unexpected happens, it will pass the star Gliese 445 in 40,000 years. In 225 million years, it will have traveled a distance equivalent to one orbit around the center of the Milky Way. Press subscribe to stay up to date from now on.